and the ambassador from the Philippines when I got sworn in his name. Because, of course, those are the two foreign countries that are the closest to my heart. But I also am terrifically happy to be here with my fellow MP, Samir Zuberi, who represents Pierre Front Dollard, Frank Bayless, the former MP from Pierre Front Dollard, uh, my good friend Lionel Perez, the uh, member of City Council from Darlington, the leader of the opposition at City Hall, and Christian Arsenault, the City Councilor from Loyola. It's great to have so many people here and leaders in the Filipino community of plenty. Al, I'm going to recognize you because you're the president of this organization. I'm afraid if I start naming people, I'm going to insult people, so I won't. But it's great to see all of the leadership here. And of course, I have to salute the Dean of the Filipino community, Natalie Palausa. Yes. Because when somebody over 90 years old makes the effort to come to a place like this, they deserve to be saluted. And trans, don't worry, you're almost going to be 90. When you turn 90, I'll start saluting you too. <laughs> but in any case, um, it's been a year already that's been kind of sad. We had the railway blockades, the disputes with our indigenous people. We have the coronavirus that's spreading around the world. We hear a lot about Donald Trump. <laughs> it's been a year where there's not been as many smiles as we would like. And Filipino Heritage Month is something that makes us all smile. One of the things that's great you know, we had the choir singing You Light Up My Life by Debbie Boone. You know, a song from the 1970s that was number one on the American Top 40 for 11 weeks. And that's a song that brings a smile to everyone's face. Because it gives you hope. And Filipino Heritage Month gives us all hope. It reminds us one day it won't be cold anymore. We'll be able to march in the parade with all kinds of rain <laughs> or sun, but at least it won't be snowy. <laughs> and we get to celebrate the heroes of the Philippines like Dr. Jose Rizal. And Continent DG has been a leader on the island of Montreal in recognizing the importance of the Filipino community. The unanimous resolution from the Cotinez Borough Council that was moved by Marvin and seconded by Lionel that was adopted a couple of years ago brought Filipino culture to the center, not only of the borough, but of the entire island. And then I was proud to have joined with Frank to have seconded Salma Zahid's motion that made Filipino Heritage Month a national celebration where we can celebrate the almost one million Filipino Canadians. And just know, that a lot of times we don't recognize how much our community is valued outside of our own borders. 
But the Filipino community has become one of the most treasured communities across Canada. Whether you go to Winnipeg, you go to Edmonton, you go to Vancouver, you go to Halifax, or you're here in Montreal, people know the Filipino community as a hardworking community, a caring community, a compassionate community, a community that deserves respect. And when we talk about spreading Filipino heritage, I love to tell the story. Well, I never told the story before, but I'm going to tell it now. <laughs> so in the Jewish community, I, I didn't come from a family. My family's been in Canada a very, very long time. But a lot of people in my generation, they would have grandparents that would speak to each other in Yiddish when they didn't want the children to understand. So today, I have noticed recently, when I've been going to parties with my friends' kids, a lot of kids in the Jewish community, when they don't want their parents to understand or their grandparents to understand, they speak to each other in Tagalog. <laughs> and that is the way the Filipino community has made its presence known in Montreal. When more Jewish kids know Tagalog than Yiddish, you know, you know you've been successful. And finally, before I give my thanks to the organizing committee and talk about how great June is going to be, there's another thing to celebrate tonight. And I know Norberto is here with his camera, but one of the people that we all know and cherish and love is Marvin Rochand. And Marvin's daughter Maggie just gave birth to a baby today and he's become a grandfather for the first time. <laughs> So I know each and every person in this room is going to want to give a message to Marvin. Can we all yell a buhai to give Marvin a congratulations for his grand new new grandchild? One, two, three, buhai! I know he'd appreciate that. And of course, congratulations as well to Jackie, who's become a grandmother. So finally, I know this June is going to be replete with the incredible events that the organizing community has been to organize and let everyone know, Sonny Moreau's in my office is here tonight, is going to be incredibly involved, and my office is going to be incredibly involved in helping to make sure that this year's celebration is even bigger than last year's. So thank you all so much. Uh, I'd just like to greet everybody here. Happy International Women's Month. Thank you, Abby, for reminding me uh, that uh, maybe I should say something about International Women's Month because uh, it's very timely. Uh, the Philippines um, is very proud of its uh, role in gender equality. So, um, as you have said, my service here in Canada is perhaps my most significant posting since I was the first woman ambassador sent by my country to Canada. And I don't think I will be the last, because uh, the Philippine Foreign Service is a meritocracy that sends out according to merit rather than gender. We are gender blind, so I'm very grateful for the system that has enabled me to serve my country here. Uh, so anyway, Mr. Abdon, Chairman, uh, Chair of the Filipino Heritage Society of Montreal, and of course, uh, Mr. Anthony House, father, Member of Parliament for Montreal, um, MP Samir Subeli, uh, former MP Frank, Baby, uh, Councillor Lionel Perez, my old friend, Shalom, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Councillor Christian Arsenal. Did I miss anyone? And of course, the leaders and members of the different Filipino community organizations in Montreal, the officers of the Filipino Heritage Society, friends, ladies and gentlemen. All rivers must run to the sea. And I am thinking 
that I'm hitting that C in my tour of duty here. Uh, I've been here for nearly six years, and that is the benchmark. <laughs> all for all our diplomats serve for six years. So um, I'm looking forward to um, continuing to work with you until the last day of my term here. I'm glad to join you in celebrating the second anniversary of the Filipino Heritage Society of Montreal. Well, Canada's Parliament unanimously adopted Motion 155 in 2018, declaring June as Philippine Heritage Month from coast to coast to coast in Canada. It was a milestone decision that was welcomed by the almost one million Filipino community in the whole of Canada. For many, the decision of the parliament was a recognition of the important role that the Filipinos play in building this great nation. It also recognizes the history of the Filipino diaspora here and the sacrifices that our people have made in, make in this adopted country that has been so welcoming to them. I remember some of you even joined me in Parliament when there was a reception hosted by um, uh, MP Salma Saeed. Yeah. Uh, she was the principal author of the motion. In true Pinoy fashion, Filipino communities throughout Canada organized themselves to commemorate this important occasion. Here in Montreal, the Filipino Heritage Society gathered uh, the different Filipino organizations, and you had the first Filipino Heritage Month celebration last year. If I recall correctly, the Filipino Heritage Society of Montreal was organized by the Council of the Borough of the Côte de Neige uh, after the Côte de Neige Notre Dame de Grasse, the declared June as the Filipino Heritage Month, as, as earlier stated. Uh, this was spearheaded by Councillor Perez and Marvin. I congratulate you as you enter your second year as an organization, and I know the different Filipino organizations have come together for this momentous event. I am aware that you have begun your preparations for the coming June, and I assure you that the Philippine Embassy We'll cooperate with you in the best way we can, and we look forward to joining you again as we celebrate this important occasion. Allow me also to remind you that the Philippine Embassy and the Philippine Foreign Service posts have now opened the overseas voters' registration for the Philippine national elections of 2022. If you have not yet registered to vote for the Philippine elections, do register. If you are you're entitled to, to register if you are a dual, dual citizen. If you have reacquired your Philippine citizenship. If you have not done so, please do so. Um, be part of the very important uh, political exercise of the land of your birth. I look forward to this evening's program, Dot Filipiniana, and I wish the Filipino Heritage Society of Montreal very well in all its upcoming activities. Mabuhay kayo lahat at maraming salamat. Everybody, hello everybody. Um, dear Al, dear members of, uh, of the society, um, obviously Anthony, Samir, Frank, Christian, it's a pleasure to be here among friends. And thoughts as well for, uh, for Marvin. Um, as you know, uh, two years ago, two years ago uh, in February, um, he tabled and I seconded and together we proposed a motion to recognize June as Filipino Heritage Month. And it's incredible how such a natural uh, decision one where we've seen the incredible potential of the community here in Cote d'Anesia and NDG and throughout the island just develop. And it was a natural progression. 
saying that we have so many members of the community that are part and parcel of our borough that we should recognize their heritage. They are proud, you are proud Filipinos, but you're proud Canadians, proud Quebecers, and proud Montrealers. And one doesn't mean that you can't be the other. And that's the beauty of our country in Canada. We can be Filipino and we can be Canadian and we don't have to doubt any kind of allegiance. And the richness that you bring is one that you share, that you willingly want to share with members of our city and our country. And that enriches all our lives. I can speak from personal experience, how over the last 10 years, where I've been a city councilor, and I've been able to become part of you, become uh, more involved and knowledgeable about your traditions, about your language, about your customs. And it's truly, truly benefit myself and my family. And that's what it's all about. This is what Cote de Neige, a multicultural community, is all about, that we can share and exchange. And you are an example of all communities of what can be done and what should be done. It's um, also um, very uh, interesting when I hear Al mention the fact that the Filipinos have been able to bring, you know, Muslims and Jews and then Petrolina is mentioning she was in the Arab uh, Emirates and then in Israel. And I, I was thinking maybe we should get an ambassador from the Filipinos to be sent as a special envoy to the, to the Middle East to try and resolve the matter. What do you say? Okay? Um, I also want to um, to recognize how it, it's a pleasure to be able to be involved and recognized with the incredible events uh, occurring in, in June. Um, I'm going to echo the comments of Anthony. Uh, obviously, you're at home here in Cote d'Ivoire and DG. You have access to whatever facilities, the parks, the help, whether it be for the month or any of the other organizations. Um, and myself and Marvin are obviously here to be of assistance if there are any hiccups along the way. And we will continue to support you, obviously, uh, financially as well, together with my colleague from, uh, from the Borough Council with Christian, uh, where it's been a unanimous decision. I'm going to close by just saying that I don't think we realize how fortunate we are to live in the place that we are. Um, we, we really have something really special that we have to take advantage. And examples like this, where we not only celebrate the Heritage Month, but we celebrate the decision to make that celebration month. I mean, talk about like with the party, right? You guys can give an example to everybody, right? You're partying about the preparation for the meeting to prepare for the event. And that's, and that's obviously a uh, kudos to you. So thank you very much. All the best. My wife. It's, it's great to be here with everybody uh, in this beautiful space, in this gathering. Uh, seeing young people, seeing older people, seeing both men and women together in this space. And actually when I walked in here with, uh, with my colleague Anahita, I remarked, and I think it's pretty apt because in, in, uh, uh, Women's Day is tomorrow, International Women's Day. And I remarked to Anahita that there seems to be many strong women in the room who are holding down the fort who are holding down the community, enriching the community, and giving life to it. And that's something spectacular, something beautiful. Myself, I did live overseas. I was a teacher overseas in the Middle East for one year. And I saw how hardworking Filipino people are, the community is. And now we see it again here in Canada, how much people contribute to Canadian society, work hard, and are part and parcel of Canadian society, are giving life to Canadian society. So we, as a government, our local government, 
We value diversity and inclusion. The fact that all of us come from different paths are contributing to the social fabric that is Canada. We all contribute to the social fabric and we all are, are, are highlighting the different elements of what Canada is and the beauty is of our country. I'll leave it at that. Um, uh, it's, it's great to see uh, the Heritage Month uh, being, being celebrated in the future. Uh, it's, it's great to, speak, um, to see uh, Ambassador Garcia here and other distinguished guests, Anthony, Mr. Perez, Christian, Thank you very much. First timer indeed, and I don't, I don't know how to follow up on such a long list of <laughs> illustrious public speakers. Uh, wish I'd been better prepared, frankly. I was just told that I could show up and have a lot of good food. But uh, really, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, for having me here tonight. Um, always a pleasure, as usual, to see friends from, uh, from multiple levels of government. Madam Ambassador, it's a pleasure to meet you for the first time. Um, allow me first and foremost to, uh, to give you my greetings and congratulations, and not just my own, but also those of uh, Montreal Mayor Valerie Plant, who is very much looking forward to Filipino Heritage Month this year. Uh, now, I'm no, I'm no Marvin Rochon. I'm not as, uh, I'm not as, as familiar with the community. But, uh, you know, I, in, in Al's invitation to, tonight, he suggested that we take a couple of minutes to, to speak about Things that we've noticed, things that jump out at us about the Filipino community and and how it stands out in Montreal. And the first thing that came to mind was actually from way before I ever got elected. I've only been in office for, for two years or so. Uh, but I've been attending council meetings since, since before then. And one thing that struck me almost from day one is just how incredibly proactive and organized and enthusiastic the Filipino community is in Montreal. 
I, I'm serious. Like I, I haven't seen anything else like it. Not in this borough. Not in other boroughs across the city. Oh. It is really. It's, it's 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 exemplary. Uh, I look around the room, and uh, as as Samir pointed out, you know, we see people of of all ages. That's something else that we don't always see at a lot of events in the community. They tend to be divided by age. Uh, so the fact that you have this wonderful mobilized community where people of all ages are getting involved, people who have been here for maybe 50 years, people who have been here for only five, that is just a wonderful example to set to the community. So tonight, um, I, I'd just like to say congratulations, you're doing a fantastic job, and please keep it up because the rest of this city has a lot to learn from you. So again, Al, thank you very much to the members of the society. Uh, I really appreciate your invitation to be here with you tonight. And I'm very much looking forward uh, and looking forward to uh, celebrating Filipino Heritage Month with you this year. Thank you. Well, first of all, I thank you, Al, for the invitation. Even though I'm no longer the member, I, I do appreciate it to come here and celebrate with you this, this wonderful opportunity. So I, I recognize Al, I recognize uh, High Commission Ambassador Garcia. I recognize my good friends, Anthony Housefather. You have an excellent, excellent MP, and I recognize one of the two best MPs from the West Island, Mr. Samuel Zubir. Great MP. We also have excellent, probably two of the best city councillors in, in Lionel and in Christian. These are two people that are always working in hard. So, congratulations for you having all that. Now, I want to give a shout out to this wonderful choir. You guys, and, and you, you sing beautifully, and you look beautiful, and the men are still very handsome. I say that. <laughs> now, very quickly, Filipinos for me, I think of three things. Three things. First thing is joyous celebration. And so, as Lionel pointed out, they find you find a way to celebrate, and that is something we're celebrating today. Every time, joyous celebrations. Number two, community. We think about our communities. The Filipino community in Canada, which we're celebrating in Filipino Heritage Month, but everywhere, the coming together, the supporting, it's a beautiful aspect of the Filipino culture. I see my friends from the Swiss back there, the West Island gang. How are you? So that's the, the second one. Can anybody guess what the third thing is when I think of Filipino? Yes. Dancing. Food. <laughs> dancing food, yes. You're gonna get <laughs> the food for sure and almost always dancing too. Those are the three wonderful things that stitch together the Filipino community and now it stitches together even in Canada. Even Canada. And I'll just end by saying one thing about bringing people together in communities. As Lionel and Al pointed out, it was Jewish people celebrating Filipino Heritage Month, started off here, and then in Ottawa, Muslim people celebrating it. Also pointed out, which is really something, because that's easy, that's easy compared to what happened when they moved this motion in Ottawa to celebrate Filipino Heritage Month, this happened, and this doesn't happen often. It was unanimous. So I want you to, that's a, that's a bring together people that we could get everybody in Ottawa to say, yeah, this is something we want to celebrate. And lastly, I'll end by saying, just to touch to what, again, Lionel pointed out, but maybe the hope for the Middle East. I was in Tel Aviv many years ago, and when I visit the city, I like to walk around. I like to walk around because that's how I see the city, and I walk a lot, and sometimes I walk in the good areas, sometimes bad areas, but I don't really worry about it. And I was there after a certain time, they'd been a bit, things go up and down tension-wise. But I was walking part of the city, and I heard laughter. I heard happiness and laughter, and I thought, hey, I, I haven't heard that a lot in the city. And I'm wondering, because I'm a curious guy, and I'm not shy, so I was turning the corner to see what was around the corner. In the Middle East, in Tel Aviv, people coming out of a church, a Filipino church, had just celebrated Mass, and were happy and joyous. And I said, there it is even right in the middle of it all. So it's already happening. They're already in the Middle East working on making us a better place. So with that, I say thank you, everybody. Welcome. And it's a beautiful opportunity for us to celebrate. Merci.
na you never let us down a good support from the uh, from the pandemic and sound and uh, we always can count on you Paul and Eddie and the rest of the guys <coughs> Okay, uh, welcome, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to the second anniversary of the uh, proclamation of motion. Um, what we call the uh, the adaptation of the motion of the Philippine Heritage Month of June the Council. But anyway, let me begin. Mr. Uh, Ambassador Petronila Garcia, Anthony House Father, Councillor Lionel Perez. Councillor Christian Arsenal, Frank Bellis, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin with a question. Why are we here today? Besides that sumptuous buffet representing Filipino cuisine and the cultural showcase by the Pamana de Luz Vuminda and the music by the Panday Tini, Majority will say that this is the anniversary of our second year commemorating the adoption of the motion to declare June as the Heritage Month for Filipinos in Montreal. Such a long title, but it can be shortened into one word, heritage. Three years ago, the word heritage is synonymous to education and tradition that every child of our Filipino ancestry should attend. We think of it, we think of it as a uh, Sunday class, sometimes at farmers, where parents drop their kids and the parents go shopping. <laughs> In short, it's a babysitting class. <laughs> Not until, surprisingly, a Jewish city councilor by the name of Marvin Rotran and seconded by Lionel Paris, introduced a motion to the city of Cordinese declaring June as the heritage month for the Filipinos. It changed everything. And another surprise too, a Muslim from Scarborough Central Ontario introduced a bill to the parliament declaring June as the official heritage month for the Filipinos across Canada. So one you got the Jews and one you got the Muslim. What can <laughs> the middle is the Filipinos. They love Filipinos. <laughs> what is the significance of this? The significance of this is those people use their position and power to recognize the contribution of the Filipinos in the Canadian society. They applied the magic word, heritage. The Filipino Heritage Society of Montreal elevated from the babysitting role to a crusade. The officers and directors of the society are participating into the intergenerational initiative, hoping the young ones will connect with the elders. The Kapihan sessions are hoping to have a dialogue among different associations and root out issues plaguing the community. The society is collaborating with, an, with association in preparation to the celebration in June 2020, Heritage this month. And I should say that this activity cannot be fulfilled with the involvement of the members of the society. I would like to honor the people who were working behind the scene and those who are the pinnacle of working with the Heritage Society. And I would say, I would like to introduce the following. Uh, uh, um, when I call your name, please stand up to be recognized. I'll start with Minda Masoni, our treasurer. Remain standing, Minda. 
you don't get fed if you sit. <laughs> Ricardo Ribaya, our assistant treasurer from the <laughs> Amelia Malon of and membership director. There you go, one of our appointees. Edita Fedeliso, event coordinator. Edita. Paul Imperial, communication. There you go. Can you imagine, most of them are from the Pandaytine, uh, yes? And Norberto Mandin Jr., our auditor. Norberto, stand up. There you go. He also represents as also a representative of Marvin Rachan. Unfortunately, our Vice President Alberto Vieira is gone to the Philippines fishing. <laughs> and our Education Dolores Belandres is also sunbathing in Abra. <laughs> Janet Perignon, our Secretary, very good, she came back to the Philippines. Lucky her, but she's still suffering of jet lag, so she's not here. And then uh, society, the society cannot perform functionally without the undying help of the following members of the auxiliary staff. As you know, we got the administrators and we have the auxiliary staff. Administrators have portfolios. Administ uh, auxiliary are assistants. And they're there as a backbone. I would like to call Sione Nueva. Nancy Carides, Melita Riglayo, Terry Pizarres, Elma Bulatao, Rebecca Aguilar, Franz Liganor, and finally, Valen Lloyd Yu. So we hope you all enjoyed this evening and hope you have fun. Thank you very much, everyone.